Another industry that has been really radically challenged and changed by the internet has been news. And in the case of newspapers, I think there's a lot more cause for concern that the internet has fundamentally broken something about the news ecosystem that we need as a society. So in the early days of the internet, there were a lot of newspapers that embraced the internet and put a lot of things online and relied on, tried to rely on advertising revenue to pay for news reporting. There are a couple problems with that. Um, one of the problems was something that's not necessarily immediately apparent when you browse news sites, which is that the internet also really cut into some of the other core revenue streams for newspapers. So first of all, newspapers are expensive businesses to run. You have to pay for reporting, you have to pay for physical plant, you have to produce a paper copy of something and then deliver it all over the place. Um, and for a long time, one of the core revenue streams for newspapers was advertising and also things like classified ads. And the internet sort of cut into some of those revenue streams that newspapers were used to using to pay for the rest of the content of the paper. So you might get a whole paper at home and there might be a fantastic front page story that's the result of months of dedicated investigative work by a small number of people. Think about, you know, if you saw the movie, uh, what was the movie about the, the Boston Catholic Church cover-up? Um, so Spotlight. Spotlight. So if you saw Spotlight, right? I mean, that's an example of the type of like the best, one great example of just really high quality journalism, and that stuff expensive. And so the ability to write those stories was to some degree being propped up by other parts of, of the newspaper business that the internet really cut into without necessarily meaning to, right? I mean, if you wanted to sell something today, would you put in, would you pay to put an ad in a paper? No way. You go put it on Craigslist or something or post it on Facebook or um, so, you know, and, and, and that was an important revenue stream for newspapers. Obviously, getting people used to having a lot of free content. So, you know, I can still go to the New York Times in my incognito window and I can open a bunch of stories on the New York Times. And I mean, this is one of the top newspapers in the country in terms of resources, in terms of scope. It's a national paper and I can get access to a lot of it without paying a dollar. Um, and, you know, is that a good thing or not? I mean, you can argue from the perspective of having an informed citizenry, it is a good thing. So, you know, uh, pro-informed citizenry. People may be more likely to read, absorb news, follow what's going on in the world if they don't have to pay for it. Um, on the other hand, the real problem is, you know, lower quality news. Um, so even at the big national papers, you see uh, papers that are struggling with a business model, a business model that they want to allow them to support long-term uh, investigative journalism that can have really, really high impact, but is harder and harder to support with, with shrinking budgets that are caused by sort of declining in online advertisement and, of course, declining number of subscriptions. So very few, you know, fewer and fewer people are actually paying for a physical paper to be delivered to their house. Why would I do that? I can just read everything I need to online. Um, and so this is, you know, and, and, and that's just the national papers. If you think about what's happening at the local level, um, it's even even more problematic. So you, know, you go to, you know, you, you go to any day of the week to the Buffalo News. Um, you know, you see advertising. You see a lot of coverage of sports, which is there because this is something that makes money. Um, and so you know, regional papers and local papers are even more affected by these same shifts. People are more likely to get their news from a big national paper than they are from a local paper. But those local papers still have a really important role to fill in our news ecosystem because there are stories that the New York Times, the Washington Post, the LA Times, you know, the Dallas Morning Herald or whatever it is, are never going to cover. They're Buffalo stories, they're Cheektowaga stories, they're you know, Williamsville stories, those stories won't get written about uh, unless somebody can pay for them. So I think, you know, the newspapers are still in this phase where I think they're still trying to figure out how to best make use of the internet. We've seen an increased reliance on paid content. So some newspapers, I think, got there earlier than others. That might have been a little bit smarter. Papers like the Wall Street Journal have long been charging for any sorts of access to their content, not 10 articles a month, zero. You gotta pay 
Um, and that your payment or your subscription is what helps keep the lights on and helps keep the quality level up. So we may see more of that. We may see more micropayments. Um, and we may just, and we're also just seeing a lot more consolidation within the news industry. It's not clear that that's a good thing for us as a society because a, you know, a, a powerful and a well-funded and a, a good network of investigative journalists that can work on stories that are in the public interest is something that's really important to a free society. And it's not clear that a mob of people on the internet taking pictures with their smartphone, that's not journalism. You're never going to be able to crowdsource the type of you know, month-long investigation that requires a lot of contacts and a lot of you know, intelligence and a lot of ability to stay with one thing. Right? You can crowdsource getting pictures from you know, some event that went on downtown or a car crash out on the throughway or something like that, but there's certain aspects of journalism we're just going to have to decide that we're willing to pay for as a society if we want to keep them. And I really hope we do keep them because I think they're fairly important.